YTPC, how are you all doing? Well, this afternoon uh, we've got cool, very wet, rainy weather here, which is good for the garden and everything. Not so good for me going on on my balcony. Uh, it's a little windy as well, so I've retreated to the cellar on this occasion. I mentioned in my last video, this one will be about owls. And it's actually a tribute to a great channel, one of several in YouTube about owls and people who keep owls. And there's a lovely lady in Russia called Nika and she has uh, an owl called Yol, Y-O-L-L. -L. I'll leave a link below. And that's a Eurasian eagle owl and has these beautiful tufts next to its ears. They're not actually ears, they're more sort of uh, for, a, if you like, make it attractive in the mating pe period. And also uh, when it wants to look fierce, it looks very fierce with these little horns. but they're just feathers. Very beautiful owl with uh, lovely orange eyes that look right at you. And um, owls fascinate me like cats because they can look at you with these great big beautiful eyes and you almost think they know everything in the whole world, but they won't tell you anything, you know. But you can talk to them and they they listen to you as, and, and sometimes they give an answer as if they uh, understood all of that, um, you know. And people can have a kind of dialogue, you know, and I know we all think, well, you know, they don't have a language, but... So, when an owl says, uh, uh, you know, woohoo, woohoo, uh, maybe it means a different thing depending on the circumstances and how they say it, you know, the intonation, the fall of tone and all of that. Well, the thing about the Eurasian owl is uh, they have a deep booming ooh-hoo. It's really, you can draw it from their middle chest and it's it's almost hard phonetically to write it, do it justice. It's it's uh, it's not like the wood owl one that we uh, are used to. That sounds a bit like this, you know. <laughs> You won't believe how many times it took me to practice that, but um, there's an owl or, or two in our woods not far away that I, some summer evenings, have a little conversation. I, I blow that call and they hoot right back, you know. So I was thinking of getting a, a pipe with an owl shape and um, of course, immediately you think of carved pipes, you think of meerschaum pipes, but I thought there must be someone out there who makes uh, a great carved briar pipe. And um, I've seen from Eastern Europe and Ukraine some very good carved pipes, but I, I, I had a look around and I came across um, a guy called Roger Vincent in France and um, I'll leave a link below. That's uh, the laughing pipe, uh, pipe re. So it means the laughing pipe and um, the link will take you to their website. And he has uh, 
amongst a lot of other nice pipes that they have there, um, he has a whole collection of carved pipes, many of them with uh, politicians' faces. You can get a Donald Trump or you can get an Obama, you can get Napoleon, you can get de Gaulle. Um, he's got maybe 20 different carved pipes. There's a beautiful one with an Indian chief. Um, and some are more expensive than others. But um, among them all, he had this pipe. An owl. It was about 90, uh, 99 euro, almost 100 euro. Big chunk of briar and lovely carving, caricature with these little uh, tufts. I thought this is just like Yol. So um, I couldn't resist to, to get this. Uh, it's a non filtered pipe, had a stinger in it. So I'm smoking it today with some crystals in the bowl and this is the inaugural smoke now the question is what would you smoke in an owl pipe and what I chose of course I suppose is pretty obvious is owl's head that's four noggins it's a bulk uh, blend from four noggins and it's actually an English blend but with black cavendish in it so it's a, a sweetened English blend and uh, Jeff Aromatics, a good friend Jeff, he got me onto this because he tried it once in a video and um, I thought that could be a nice sort of uh, sweetened English blend, I'll, I'll try that. And, and that was maybe a year and a half ago and I really liked this one so it told me you know you can like English blends with a bit of sweetness and Owl's Head is definitely a very good one. I think it had uh, 3.4 in tobacco reviews, so I'm not the only one who likes it, you know. Using my Nimrod Hunter lighter, not that I was thinking of hunting. Owls should be protected, they're beautiful creatures, and actually they're very good at getting rodents. And in some countries, they actually keep owls like we have cats. Um, to control the, the rodent population on a farm or whatever. Farmers usually love to have them and put little nesting boxes and things for them for that reason. And uh, it's a bit like the witches, you know, they used to have a, a cat or maybe they would have had an owl, you know. All makes sense, you know. They're very mystic, beautiful creatures. The Eurasian eagle owl which is sometimes called the European owl, but um, the populations are higher in Eastern Europe, but it spreads all across Europe. For example, I found out that in UK, there must be somewhere between 12 and 40 nesting pairs of these eagle owls. Switzerland has about 150 because they like mountainous countries and they like cliffs and they like coniferous forests. So I can imagine in the UK, it would be Scotland and, and regions like that that they would like. And they can weigh almost up to 10 pounds or four kilos and they have a respectable half metre um, wingspan. It's actually not a huge wingspan considering the size of the bodies, which are quite large. But um, they have very good uh, of course incredibly acute eyes and um, also the hearing at night helps to, to guide them so very, they can pick out things that we couldn't do at uh, 10 to 50 meters at amazing detail uh, the call that they give it sounds like this And they like to call uh, at sunset or sunrise, generally, when they're all declaring their territory or trying to call uh, in the mating season. In any case, uh, do have a look at, I'll put a link for um, uh, 
the, the Yol Channel, if you like, from R Russia. It's uh, the dialogue, of course, is in Russian, and my Russian is not particularly good. But uh, sometimes she also does captions in English, and often puts the title in English. And it's just amusing, uh, depending on the topic of the day, how she talks with her various owls. She's got other reptiles, a little bit of a zoo. Um, and uh, goes on outings and everything with Yol. And it's a very popular channel. It's got a huge number of subscribers. Uh, and there are several others, of course, uh, which, if you like owls, could be, you know, amusing for you to, to have a look at. Just listening to a bit of soft piano from the radio. Very pleasant. Um, if you want to try another English blend with a little bit of sweetness, I do recommend Owl's Head. Actually, this is the only jar I've got. I just downloaded this um, as a kind of nice label to put on it. Um, doesn't come in a tin, it's a bulk blend, but uh, I may order some more of that. Almost looks like it's perching on my hand, isn't it? <laughs> Sometimes I get these more amusing pipes to amuse my little great nieces and nephews who uh, I tell uh, little fairy stories or magic stories. And of course I could tell one about this magic pipe, you know, I'm already thinking how I'm going to tell that story to them. Very, very easy um, tobacco, uh, all, all day, definitely. And uh, it's basically Virginia, of course, Oriental and Latakia, and it's very nicely balanced, just enough black Cavendish to make sure you're getting the sweetness there, but not overpowering any of the other tobaccos. The amazing thing about owls, there are so many different species, um, and they're all adapted to different terrains and different hunting patterns, different times of day. I'm quite fortunate in the area I live, we're near the, the foothills of the Eura Mountains and there's a lot of chalk cliffs and a lot of wood, wooded areas which are quite suitable for birds of prey. So we have lots of um, red melon, they look almost like eagles, they're so big. Um, mouse buzzards, um, uh, kestrels and, and falcons and all kinds of those birds, but also a good number of owls here of different kinds. Last summer, I one late summer evening when it was almost dark, but not quite, I saw this ghostly white figure silently gliding across the sky which went right past my balcony up towards the woods up there and it was uh, a barn owl and um, was keeping its eye open for any mice that got lazy by living near the houses probably but it was very silent. It's amazing how their feathers are actually adapted, that they can swoop up, down on, on, a, on a mouse with fairly large ears to hear what's coming, and they don't even know it's on its way, you know. Anyway, not to make it too uh, long today, just... Uh, a little short one to show you this delightful pipe and um, 
I forgot to mention that uh, Roger Vincent and, and this little uh, pipe re uh, shop is in uh, St. Claude, which was the birthplace of all briar pipes, wasn't it? So it's good to know they're still there and still producing very interesting, beautiful uh, briar pipes. And I think several other major producers like Chacon and uh, Boots Chacon uh, are based in St. Claude and there's probably a number of others. And actually, I probably in about two hours I could get there with the car. So one of these days I'm gonna go and have a look and make some video footage of that visit. Well, I'm going to enjoy the rest of this pipe. So I'm going to say cheerio from me and cheerio from uh, Yol. In honor of the great channel Yol, I will call my little pipe here Yol. So, so do have a look. And um, I'm going to take a little bit of a, a break from videos, maybe for a, a week or so. Uh, before you see me again but hopefully next time I'll be on the sunny balcony or even in my my garden enjoying some sunshine take care everyone look after yourselves bye bye <laughs>